Thank you. Hey, how you guys doing? Hi. I'm sitting here with bronchitis. I've been sick for a few days, so if my voice, if I sound like my head's in a bucket, it's because it kind of is. But, uh, you know, my wife said, maybe you shouldn't do this. And I said, anytime I can get around a group of people that has a passion for history, not just reading it, but touching it, feeling it, bringing it out of the ground, and, and we can all learn from it, I said, I'm not gonna miss that, you know? So me being here with you guys tonight means a lot to me because I can already tell, watching the program earlier, talking to Nick on the phone, you guys have a passion for history. And it's a passion that probably makes you strange to some of your friends. You know, non-diggers don't get it, do they? Yeah, I, when I was wrestling years and years ago in a past life, I was in the dressing room once and Ric Flair asked me, he said, he said, Savage, what are you doing this weekend? And I said, well, I'm planning to go relic digging. And he said, what is that? And I started to go into, well, you know, we take metal detectors and we go to his store. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. He said, whatever you got to do to get you through the day. He said, I just wanted to know if you wanted to go have a couple of beers. <laughs> that was it. End of discussion. And you guys have probably run into that too. If somebody brings up bottles at a party, you guys get into the conversation, you start talking, you feel the passion. How long does it last before people are changing the subject? It's like, oh, oh look at the time. Because they don't feel it, right? You guys feel it, and it makes you different. It makes us weird. <laughs> it makes us strange. We like to dig up rusty stuff, glass stuff that people haven't touched. People threw it away, but we're digging it up, and we're learning from it, and we're appreciating where it came from. And that's what I do every day, and that's what you guys are doing. And, you know, together, whether you're on TV or not, it's really irrelevant. The most important thing is that we find this stuff, we learn from it, and we pass that information on to the younger folks. Because they're the future of your hobby, my hobby. They're the future of everything. And it worries me, because I go to relic shows a lot. I go to Civil War shows, World War II shows, because I love artifacts. And I see less and less young folks. I see more and more older folks, my age and above, but I don't see a lot of kids, and that scares me because I don't want to see these hobbies go away. So I tell everybody, if you have a nephew, a son, a daughter, a neighborhood kid, show them the passion. Hand them a bottle. Take them digging. Show them what it's like. Help them catch the bug. I did it with my two boys, and it's paid off because now they're working with me. If you've seen the show, American Digger on Spike, you've seen my son, G. Got another son named Nick. You're going to see him this season. And this is his first season being out digging. And he's still kind of finding his way, but he's getting that bug. And to me, that's what it's all about. So that's, that's basically how I wanted to start out. Um, that's my lovely wife, Rita. She is here with me, but she's catching what I had, so she's taking a nap in the vehicle, waiting on me. But she is my partner, and you know, I'm married, so she's my best friend, she's my partner, and she keeps me grounded, because I'm a collector. And for all you ladies out here that are married to collectors, when I say she keeps me grounded, you know what I'm talking about. Because if she didn't keep me grounded, we would have to buy another house just to put the stuff that we dig in it. She makes me sell it, even if I don't want to sometimes. So it's always good to have a partner that shares the passion but knows where to draw the line. And that's what Rita's there for, to keep me uh, in line. And you're going to see a lot more of Rita this season as well. That's my son, G. He's our little man, Tate. And he is just caught the bug and just can't, can't dig enough. You know, we've had several months off in between our first season and our second season, which we start filming next week. So this will be the last time I do anything like this until 
February because we'll be on the road uh, doing the show until then. But uh, he's been digging up in Gettysburg everywhere he could get his metal detector down because we all took some time off because, you know, 13 weeks on the road's a long time. Doesn't sound like it, but it'll wear you out. So, you know, and we dig other places outside of the stuff that shows on TV. So it's a full-time job. So we took a few months off and he takes the time off and keeps digging anyway. So I couldn't ask for more than that. That's my youngest son, Nick. He will be with me this year. Um, Bob and Rue will not be rejoining us on the show. Bob owns a business down in Manassas called Centerville Electronics. He sells and repairs White's metal detectors. He writes books. He's written a book on uh, hut site digging A to Z and relic digging A to Z. And he's been digging about 40 years. But he just couldn't run his business and be away from it for weeks at a time. And Rue, you know, God bless him, uh, was diagnosed with cancer and is in chemo right now and he's fighting that so we're praying for him i check in on him almost every day but he just couldn't get back out on the road this year so it's going to be a family show which is going to be a little bit different for anybody that saw it last year but i think in a lot of ways it's, it's going to bring a new dynamic to the table and i think everybody's going to like it the machines we use i get asked a lot what kind of equipment do you use to dig that's my machine, White's MXT Pro. I've spoken to a couple of you in here that use White's machines. And there's a lot of others. There's Tesoro, you know, you've got Garrett, you've got Fisher, you've got MindLab, you have uh, Nautilus. There's a lot of different machines out there on the market. I use White's specifically because I hunt in different types of areas, Northern Virginia, Central Virginia, two different kinds of soil. Northern Virginia, Southern PA, mineralized. So if you take a regular machine like a, like a Nautilus in an area with hot ground or mineralized soil, the machine's useless, it goes nuts. Whites, I can put it on a different setting, I can hunt anywhere I want. So for me, it's more of an all around machine. So I use the Whites MXT Pro, the other machines that we use, which it's a bad picture, sorry, but uh, this is the White's V3i. Reason I like the V3i, wireless headphones. For you guys that metal detect, we all carry the machines the same way, throw them over your shoulder, and what happens? You tangle up the cord on your headphones in everything. When you got the uh, wireless, it takes that away. So I like the V3i machine. Use it sometimes, we used it on the show. Uh, we did an episode in St. Augustine, Florida, and I was hunting a lot of sandy area, and I used this. Had really good luck with it. So if you're looking to get into metal detecting, maybe you're not there yet, I always suggest whites. I've used every other kind of machine on the market. I just think it's a better all-around machine to hunt with. We also use ground penetrating radar. Those are expensive. Yeah. Luckily, having a television show, they let me use this stuff. And I had to pay for it. How many of you bottle diggers would cut off your left arm to have a GPR when you're hunting a house site trying to find a privy or a trash pit? I mean, come on, it's great. 20 feet almost down. 20 feet. So if you want to cover a lot of ground fast, GPR is the way to go. Problem is, it's a premium price. They're like 20 grand. You know, I can't afford them either. So we got lucky. We have a company that uh, sponsors us and they let us use their machine. I also have a handheld unit that we used in Chicago in a basement to uh, be able to look in walls and under floors in tight places. So it's great, it's great to use. And I tell you what, when you're using them out in the field, if I'm hunting a house site, because when we were in Brooklyn, we had a parking lot and we were looking for a privy site. 
And for those of you not sure what a privy is, especially younger folks, it's an outhouse. You know, the 19th century restroom. People used them as trash pits. They threw everything in them, filled them in, moved on. So all of that trash is now treasure. And a GPR allows me to search a lot of area quick. Because I'm a businessman, I'm trying to make money, obviously, I don't have a lot of time to kill. So I try to do everything as fast as possible, but still be effective and still be thorough. So the GPR has been a fantastic tool for us to use. And we hunt everything. There is no artifact out there that I won't look for. Here you got a little bit of a mix. You got some World War II, you've got some World War I, you got some Civil War, a little bit of everything. We hunt everything. You know, war, war is hell, as Sherman said, and partly because of him if you lived in Georgia. But uh, it, to me, anywhere where something historical happened, that's where I want to go. People say, how do you pick your sites? How do you guys know where to go? Biggest question I get, how do you know where to go? You guys know, don't you? Research. Digging starts in the library. Digging starts in the local register of deeds office. You know, digging is not, you know, there's some guys out there, you've met them and I've met them, they're the folks that complain Everything's been dug. It's all gone. Every good spot's been hit. There's nothing left out there. Don't even waste your time. Have you ever heard it? You ever had somebody say that to you? It's hunted out. You know why it's hunted out? Because every digger goes to the same place because they heard from their friend or somebody they dig with, go over here, you know, three years ago we found a bunch of stuff here. Everybody goes to hunt there. That's not where the stuff is anymore. That is hunted out. Where is the stuff? It's in Mr. and Mrs. Smith's front yard. Poses a problem, doesn't it? Because now you gotta get permission to dig there. And that comes to the crux of the difficulty of our hobby, finding homeowners that will allow you to do artifact recovery on their property. Sometimes it's easy, but if it's easy, what does that mean? Somebody else has already been there. 